Let's get ready for Infinite Forbidden, the next TCG course set of July. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more Oz content. Infinite Forbidden. What a time. So guys, please leave a comment down below. I want you to be walking away with a booster pack as per usual, and that winner will be on Tuesday's Market Watch. Infinite Forbidden. Um, I wanted to pull up the OCG side of things before we start getting into the nitty gritty here. So you could see, you know, where the high value is and kind of start to decide, all right, you know, where do I need to be saving money to get these future cards? I also want to point out here, you know, we don't quite get this holographic rare like the OCG does, but this thing is also only like four dollars which is kind of insane to think about if you're a collector that would be something to kind of pick up also we will be rotating off of the magician of quarter century we'll be going to this dragon here and uh, let me be honest with you here not the craziest fan of this but it'll be something to actually have to be excited about. Uh, so as you can see down here, even the new Dark Magician in QCR, which will probably follow suit here as well, this will probably eat up a secret race slot for us. Uh, you're looking at about 20, uh, 2480 yen. Fiendsmith looks to be probably one of the most expensive QCRs in the set. This card is the nuts, and you already know the TCG is going to nuke that into exist or out of existence. I mean, th that is the only quarter century in here next to the white woods because the white woods actually surpasses it you have cute tax here <laughs> of course All right i guess that's what our player base actually wants so that's your high rarity quarter centuries now they do have these secret rares out here um in terms of things once again fiend smith fiend smith fiend smith the white woods on the follow-up here and then of course everything else in the secret rare department um, except for the top hat hair. Um, keep in mind that this card is going to be exceptionally important to the meta. It's a generic link too that lets you pull out any trap monster from your deck. Jurai Gumo is a very good card. And of course, look at this. The, the new hand trap that we do get in the set, even though very few decks can actually play this, having this exist, I think is going to be a good thing. Ultimate rares. Oh boy. The Dark Magician and a nice 320. It's like two dollars, which is actually horrifying. The Fiendsmith 22. Um, the Light and Darkness Dragon coming in at 320. All right, and then of course basic ultra rares. So in terms of your rarity stuff, Fiendsmith is the pinnacle of this set, coming in at the most expensive slot at 1980. I'm not surprised to see that at all. Everything else in this set next to the Light and Darkness Dragon, like what, 180? Um, this didn't really take off too much in the meta. It is a very cool card, that's for sure. And then 280 on the uh, back end here. And now your super rares, this is where the value distributes. Uh, you guys know that the caveman here is going to be used as a massive extender for a lot of decks. This card is extremely broken. The white woods, both of these are extremely up there in value. And of course, the super rare for the hand trap, even though nobody really sees play here, it still does have value. And same thing with the top hat hair. Once again, having that pretty interesting value. And I do see down here. Our Tenpai was only a rare at 80 cents. That's freaking hilarious to see. But Mulchummy actually still in stock as well at the $2 slot. Okay. So this will be probably upgraded to a secret rare for us. I, I would be surprised to not see this get a QCR slot in our set. But most of your super rares, I mean, Tractus, the Searcher, coming in at 120 as well. Um, most of the value in this is distributed very lowly. Uh, of course, you can't forget the Madolche cards in here as well. So you, you know where your high value stuff is going to look in terms of transitioning here for us. Now, in terms of things to consider for post meta, um, Beatrice has been gaining some stupid value. And I, I do continue to mention this card a lot per these market watches because I think that this card is so interesting. Because uh, it should have a target on its back, because this just makes the Fiend Smith combo, you know, so insane. Obviously, you know, your low rarity versions just dip on down, but that gold rare still trucking on along here very, very strongly. Um, also, Madolche stuff. <laughs> These Tiara Misus here as well, 
Nice uh, quarter century secret rare Japanese here. You're looking at $53 for the QCR. Ultimate rares, on the other hand, surprise, surprise, these are actually losing out to um, the other end of the market. I expected, no, actually, first in your mints are over the $70 mark. So it looks like OG Ultimate Rare is actually beating out the QCR. I'm not surprised about that, honestly. Like, that's from what the older era ultis do tend to just kind of win out. Uh, Pudding Cess also has some insanely strong value back here as well. Just this whole first page of mod plays is kind of insane to actually see. And then you hit the $30 mark back here for that. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I guess uh, you can never really underestimate Max or any Middle Salons are also back up to the $20 mark for this set. <laughs> Actually, they're up beyond that. They're 23 again. Okay, well, I guess I should have saw that one coming. Most people should have. And of course, these Angelis, $6 and $9. Okay, well, I hope whatever candy treats that you plan on having going forward for this, um, you're looking very expensive. Also, the OCG's been having a fun rescue ace time. Now, I don't know if this is going to follow suit in the TCG or not. We've just been kind of... This, this deck is not really our forte as of late. Uh, it's not to say that the deck isn't good, but you can still get CRs for 28 bucks, and Turbulences are down to 18s. Like, the Mighty have fallen. Hydrants at a nice $2, and then, of course, the Super Rares. Also, it's still $2. Uh, though, I will tell you, Impulse, still about $2 as well. Um... It's kind of actually interesting just to see how the Rescue Ace stuff, you know, they reprinted it, it fell off the meta. The set four combo is still dummy insane with this deck. Um, we also have the Loving Defender Forever. Uh, I see the Asian English ones are plaguing the market here, but yeah, you're looking about 150, 165 for these. That's actually kind of interesting. Didn't expect to have that value for you, Bill. Your OG, um, still 70 plus dollars. And, of course, the Ultimate Rares is still up and up as well here. Uh, Legendary Collection Seeker Rares, these never budged down either. Still $40 all day long, except for these mod play ones. But, I mean, that's just you, Bell, in a nutshell. Those higher rarity ones are always going to do their thing. Seeker Rare Ultimate Nightmare, still $27 on price. 17s, though you still have one for 13 there. Interesting. I I don't know what else to say about the U-Bell stuff. I really wish... That we had that ultimate rare. That looks sick. Thank you, AE. I'm so glad that you guys get all the cool stuff to actually have out here. All right. Yeah, even like the rares, the, the rares did fall down pretty hard. Uh, Nightmare Thrones, nice $160. Has not changed. Meanwhile, ultra rare Nightmare Thrones, um, since Phantom of Ubel is expected sometime soon, you've gained that $34 mark here pretty quickly. Okay. Well, <laughs> Good luck. Also, memento stuff. You're still at seventy dollars on the dark blade. Anguish at seventy. You do have one cheap one for sixty-five. Then you go up. Uh, combined creations actually are hitting forty dollars finally. Uh, also, bone parties have actually they've come down a little bit. It's not been a great drop here, but what like thirty bucks. So. Having a good value retrace on that, in my opinion, is good. Um, and then, of course, the CR, 20 bucks. Anguish, regular copies, 19s. Regular combined creations are <laughs> $4. Poor, poor guy. And then, of course, Unchained cards. So keep in mind, you know, we do have the Fiend Toolbox stuff coming. Um, I don't think, you know, we're going to see any real crazy movements on these, but the things you do need to watch are, you know, Soul Lord Yama, 185. Uh, though I will tell you, Chaos Impact versions of these fell. Five, twenty-three dollars for Yama. Okay, and then of course, Secret Rare uh, Doggy here is now at nine dollars. So you got some decent stuff in the Unchained department to keep an eye on. Also, Voiceless Voice. Keep in mind here, we do have this uh, deck's not getting any more support, but it, it still kind of remains at the dinner table as one of those decks to kind of still try to play the tier one game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how Power Creep goes for this. It looks like Skull Guardians. 110. Wow, these these did push down. Well, that's very interesting. I expected those to still kind of keep up and do well, but okay. Uh, Sephira's were 115. Sephira's worth more than the uh, Skull Guardian. Sure. Sephira's 28 bucks. That's sad. And of course, lows have actually hit their low. <laughs> yep. $33. Wow. 
That is crazy to be seeing right now. Saphiras are also $7 the way it looks. To be fair, yeah, these are gaining momentum again. Cool. Yeah, you're looking about sixes. I didn't expect to see Saphira being the thing gaining value, but all right. And then, of course, Soul Guardian base rarity, a dollar. Well, interesting. So what do you guys think about getting ready for Infinite Forbidden? Make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.